Hello everybody, this is Shadow Wolf, Mark with Shadow Wolf Designs here with another Lightwave 3D tutorial for you. Today we're going to be blowing stuff up with bullet dynamics. Alright, so to get started, I already have bullet dynamics enabled on this, so I'm actually going to get rid of them. So, we're just going to remove all. Now, taking you into Modeler, I'm going to show you how I have this set up. I have three objects on three separate layers. I have my bullet on one layer, which is right there. I have my blocks, which I'm breaking apart. This is going to be your fractured item. And remember, if you fracture it, break it into as few of pieces as possible. The more pieces, the more likely you are to crash your computer when you try and simulate. Just a warning. Just try to keep it to as few pieces as possible. Now, you notice that this is actually... I selected the whole block and this is just one piece. This block is actually this entire cube is made up of 125 little blocks. All right. And then I also have my ground. When you guys do this, you'll have your whole scene, but it's important to have your ground, your bullet, or if you don't have a bullet, don't worry about that, and then your uh, breakable object on three separate layers. Now the way I'm doing it is I have a bullet that's moving. And I have it move through my object. Now if you don't have a bullet, what you're going to do is you're just going to uh, break your object on by hitting it on a surface. And if you just raise this up, the simplest way to do it is to raise this up off the ground. Turn this into a parts body. And select your ground and turn that into a static body. Your ground is always going to be static because it doesn't move, hence static. Now if you don't know where I'm at, I'm under effects tools and then you have dynamic body and collision body. The only thing that's going to be a dynamic body is the part that breaks. Everything else is going to be a collision body. Things that move in order to break stuff are going to be kinematic bodies, things that don't move, such as the ground, are going to be static bodies. Now right now I don't have my bullet activated, but I have my ground activated and this activated. So when it hits the ground, because gravity is already in effect, because it has dynamics on it, it's going to just break apart when it hits the ground. And that's one way to do things. I'm going to come back here, grab that object, and zero that out again. Okay, and I'm going to zero that out too. Maybe. There we go. And now you notice that it... Oops. Don't drag your slider bar on the older versions you could on the newer versions until you... Once you run it through once, it's fine. Now I can drag it around and it's, it'll play smoothly. But, so what's happening now is because it's sensing there's automatically a collision with the ground. So it's breaking apart right off the bat, which we don't want. So you're going to come into where it says bullet, mine's under more, but yours is probably just sitting out here. And it's going to say item properties. You're going to click on that. And actually, I'm going to bring this to the other side and circle this around so we can see it better. So we have two of these are activated right now. We have bullet layer one, which is parts, which is this, and then bullet layer two, which is our ground. Bullet layer two, we want to start active. Bullet layer one, which is our parts body, on activation, we want to start sleeping. Now if we run through this, you'll notice it doesn't break apart, and that's because it hasn't sensed a physical collision yet. Just resting on something, it doesn't count as a collision. And that's where it's important that you make sure that when you set it up, because my cubes, I did them with numerical entry, so they're all stacked exactly on top of each other. There is no gap between. They're not overlapping, but there's no gap. Same thing with the cubes in the ground. 
But one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down here. Actually, I'm just going to minimize that. Now I'm going to come back to zero so I can grab my bullet. We're going to turn my bullet under collision body into kinematic. Now let's play. Now kinematic will not work with hard effects because the what it goes off of, and when you get done here, I'll show you. When you use a hard body, this pivot point doesn't move. If this pivot point doesn't move, the object is not considered in actual motion. You'll notice that that pivot point moving is what actually is going to cause that collision because it's saying that this object is in motion. You have physically moved this object. But this gets you a great effect. As we watch, bam, things blow up. And you'll notice that right now I have it set up so that when this hits, it sort of slows down. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So back in our bullet dynamics window. Now I know, minimize this again, that at frame 9 is when it, well it was frame 9. Somewhere around frame 9 or 10 is when it's hitting. So at frame now it's hitting at frame 6. Before it was hitting at frame 9, but I did slow things down. But you'll notice that, that there it starts slowing down. Our bullet starts moving visibly slower. And it's not because I adjusted anything on here. It's because in our bullet dynamics, if under the world properties, you have item and world, gravity is on by default. But we have this time scale down here. And it said control is disabled right now because I have an envelope. By default, this is at 100. If you turn it down, it's almost like doing slow mo. If you ever do slow mo, you're going to want to do it in lightweight. You're not going to want to go into Premiere Pro or whatever your video editing program is to do that because then it ends up looking jerky. But what I did was I started out at 100. There's a keyframe already at position 1 and I came out to frame 9 put another keyframe with this tool right here to let them to let it know that at that point I want it to still be 100 then at frame 10 I use this little button and I'm gonna use this one right click and drag to select you'll see that this is at frame 10 I use this button to make it and it, I was on like frame 12 so I just highlighted that typed it in and hit enter then I brought it down to 40 so at this point at the 10th frame its speed drops from 100 to 40 which is visibly slower watch we'll go notice how fast that's moving and it's sort of hard to see but notice how quickly that's going away from you and then not nearly as much and then it's just slow movement which lets you get this quick bullet dynamics thing to last longer so now it actually lasts most of the 300 frames you still have pieces falling at 150 they're bouncing off of each other still got pieces falling pieces settling and right around 300 when the movement movements pretty much end and you'll notice some jittering, but that's just, that's bullet dynamics. Once you get more advanced, you'll figure out how to get rid of that. And one cool thing to do is if you, I'm going to grab my camera, go into 6, come down to 0. I'm on position, I'm just going to drop it down below this. Now if you ever want a cool little animation, falling blocks. It's just something a little cool that you can do. Just an idea, but that would be something that you could do to use bullet dynamics for more than just breaking stuff apart. Alright, so I'm going to click off my camera. Uh, where's my bullet? That's the smallest box I have. But really, that's as easy as bullet dynamics are. If you notice that something isn't working right, 
go in here to your item properties and just deactivate everything and then reactivate it. If that still doesn't work, and by deactivate I actually mean remove. So remove all and then we can actually activate. Actually we can't activate all. But then we can go in, this is a we have our bullet selected, that's a kinematic body, our ground is a static body, and this is a parts body. So now we'll play through, it'll calculate, and again, that actually is a cool effect right there, where it sort of blows up and then gets shot. But again, then you have to go through and say, this actually needs to start sleeping, which is as simple as on your parts, activation, start sleeping. So now when we go through, it doesn't actually blow up until it gets hit. Alright, that is the quick and dirty of how to do a, um, how to set up bullet dynamics. Now, now that you have the basics, I'm going to tell you a couple things about the settings. Under item properties, under our parts body, we have this thing called glue strength. And this is how well your pieces stick together. I like to go 70, 75. It just makes them stick together a little bit better, makes things last a little bit longer. Obviously, with something moving this fast through it, it's still going to get broken apart, but it takes just a tad longer. Um, and it doesn't get blown apart quite as much. Uh, but it also leads to a slightly more realistic look. Also, you have bounciness. You have bounciness on everything. Um, the bouncier it is, obviously, the more it's going to bounce. Not 1,000. We're going to go with 100, just for demonstration purposes. And we're going to go with 100 on everything. Now, you'll notice that this actually makes things literally explode, which is a cool effect. You know, say that box just hit there, and it just shot way up in the air. Really cool effect. Actually, that would be perfect for a grenade. Because that's actually sort of how a grenade explodes. Bam! But that's what bounciness gets you. You turn that down, and it won't go nearly as far. Now, if you're in a room and you do that, that could create some really cool effect because all these pieces will start bouncing around. Sorry, I get distracted sometimes playing. Alright, so we're going to go back into item properties. Like I said, that was bounciness. Dampening is how much is the loss of energy. So when they're moving, this will actually cause them to lose their energy. When they hit something, they lose more energy. Right now it's at 1%. And that's default, and that's fine. Um, and other than that, that's those are the only features that you really need to worry about right now for the basics. Um, if you notice that things are falling through your static body, come over to Shape, and just bump up the collision margin a little bit. Not too much because then it'll actually start hovering. Your items, your your parts will hover on top of it, which it's not good. So you don't want to do that. However, um, sometimes the five millimeters isn't thick enough for your object, and your object, your parts will pass through it. With this, obviously, we don't have anything passing through it because it's all going everywhere else. But this has been. That last part was your little bit of advanced quick and dirty of bullet dynamics. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been Mark. If you liked it, please leave a like below. If you have not yet subscribed to me, please click the subscribe button right next to my name. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. I appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to see any other lightweight tutorials that I haven't done yet, um, just leave a comment below and I'll get to it when I can. I will get to it but it might not be right away. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. This is Mark. Have a good day.